Hi, and welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. I'm Martin Bailey, and joining us today is John Baxter, from the Managing Director from E-Alliance Learning Technology Limited. Welcome, John, and thank you for taking the time to join me today. How are you? Yeah, I'm great, thanks, Martin, and thanks again for inviting me. Absolutely my pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure. So look, why, why do we just start this? Why do you kick this off? Is you, you tell us a bit about who you are and, and what you do. Yeah, of course. I've spent the majority of my career working in education, training and development across a range of disciplines, predominantly adults, uh, predominantly business to business environment. So in 2015, just over eight years ago, um, I made the decision following a redundancy to set up my own company. And that was really based on a whole range of experience that I've had, and particularly latterly in digital learning, online learning, compliance training, and so on and so forth. So yeah, I, I took the, the step into the big unknown and set up the Alliance Learning Technology. Um, and we're still here today. Which is great, which is great, because I mean, as I'm sure you know, the start that a lot of businesses uh, they don't start out don't actually last five years, so so last thing is a milestone. Um, now it's, it's interesting because you know a lot of people these days go into business because they've been made redundant. That that that's a, that's a common, a common uh, reason for starting a business. Um, so if you were to rewind with all the knowledge and everything you've been through now, if you were to rewind eight years ago, is is there anything you would do differently? Oh yeah, yeah. And I think you've just hit the nail on the head. You know the redundancy. What do I do next? Well, maybe I've got enough knowledge to do this on my own. I think in hindsight, I'd have given myself a little bit more time to plan and um, invent the brand um, and um, rather than self-funding right the way from day one, possibly gone interim, possibly taken something part-time and built the thing up a little bit more slowly rather than jumping straight in. And then suddenly realizing, wow, you know, this is quite a thing I've taken on. So, so what, why, why do you say that? So, what, what, why have you come up with that sort of that sort of insight? What, 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 what challenges did you face that made you? The, the challenge initially was very financial. You know that um, I've got to self fund this, therefore I've got to start generating an income. You know, otherwise things are going to go badly wrong. And um, so, you know, I looked at where I was. I looked at what I needed in terms of immediate resource um, to start, not just to invent the business, because it, I had that sort of planned in my mind, but really, how did I put that into practice? Yeah. And um, I think there were a couple of key things. Firstly, I've worked um, closely with some major um lms providers that's learning management system providers so i was very au fait with the digital learning industry and i very quickly got into bed with um, a company who were then in the top five uk lms providers unicorn training and unicorn helped me to set up um, my own multi-tenancy learning platform and from there we were then able to sell unique customized learning environments to our clients that sat on our cloud-based solution. We then harnessed in um, the services of other software providers, predominantly in um, bespoke content. Um, and so we began to build a solution that had an LMS at the core, and then we had off-the-shelf content, but not just any content, because even eight years ago, there were some pretty, um, average material out in the marketplace and then there was some pretty good stuff and so i identified and partnered with um, some of the main players and over the fullness of time interestingly unicorn got acquired by the access group who are one of the top 10 uk software workplace software providers who i now partner with access then swallowed up a whole range of the content developers so I've gone from um, a sort of multi-partnership um, arrangement when I started, now working with one partner that provides me with a range of solutions, but also working with a lot of um, strong, experienced independents. So I'm talking about consultants who work around curriculum, who work around content development, so that we've been able to um, fine-tune the solution really to meet a range of market needs that have sort of evolved as the business has evolved. 
Okay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you explained to LMS because it's very easy when you're in your own environment yes, yeah, reading okay. and things. People go, oh, what the hell does that mean? Yeah. Um, now, I want to, there's a couple of things in there I want to dig into. I want to just step back. I mean, when, we, when we talked about what you do differently, you talked about plan. Uh, mm. You'd have, to have a bit more of a plan when you started out. How, how, how do you plan in your business now? What, 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 how, you know, how, how do you take so that? I think the thing, let, let me take it back, Martin, because, I, you know, stepping into that space, it's a big congested marketplace. And whilst I had great knowledge of the industry and a pretty good network, you're swimming with all the sharks. And so you have to have a plan and you have to have a USP. And the way that I've evolved the business really um, has been around A, the target market, which has been small to medium-sized businesses, and B, a knowledgeable, um, <laughs> well, knowledgeable to me, a requirement that businesses don't want a one-size-fits-all solution that gets handed over to them, here you are, get on with it. What the smaller businesses want is something that is more customized. It meets an exact requirement. Um, it's not going to cost the earth. And I should impress that our solution is cloud-based. So there's no additional investment in IT infrastructure. And that's a big issue to a lot of organizations, and particularly small to medium-sized businesses. They haven't got the capacity to manage additional IT or the budget to invest in that. So where we're going is a place possibly that those businesses didn't really have access to in terms of having access to a top quality product, which is essentially what we have. So that was really the plan. The secondary plan was to have um, a model, um, a sales model that was sustainable. And therein, working with training providers who were a lot of them moving into the blended learning space or indeed wanted to tap into online resources, but again, didn't want the whole investment piece, um, but also to generate a renewal model, i.e. they can go out and they will give them what they need. They go out to the marketplace, they sell it to their clients. We customize it, we scope it with them then there becomes a renewal coming through. And a great example um, is the training provider, and I'm talking about a number of training providers, obviously, but the training provider who is an ILM, an Institute of Leadership and Management um, delivery um, company. And so many of those companies now have had to um, cut back on delivery costs and going online, and going blended has been the one route that they've taken. So working with those organizations, giving them a resource that they can then sell into their own delivery model has been a real winner for the Alliance. Um, and we built that, and that's probably been one of the, um, the platforms of success for us has been that we've been able to work with those organizations. We've been able to reinvent the content we now cover something like 50 different units across leadership and management and coaching and mentoring within the ILM remit. And, you know, we've worked with um, content experts. We've worked with curriculum experts to develop digital resources. And I'm talking of not just about e-learning, but I'm talking about workbooks and other materials that they would need to deliver their programs in a digital environment. So, you know, it's it's been very diverse, I think. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you you, you mentioned what renewal. Do you, when you talk about renewal, are you talking about recurring income? So they they yes. pay yeah. the license fee for you. The ones that I mean, these are these are organisations that will typically tap into um, government funding, um, and they will then have recurring programmes. So every month, every other month, they will be coming back to us and saying, "Well, we're starting another cohort." So we need X number of licenses. And that that's is what I'm, yeah. and I'm not saying that's, that is not without its challenges as well, Martin, because obviously Brexit has changed the way that government funding has been structured. And a number of my um, training providers have had to pull right away because the funding has gone away. Whether that's temporary or long-term, it's politically influenced, but you know, it's changed the way that we've had to think about the business. And it's changed the way that we've had to plan the business as well. Um, yeah, I get that. I get that. But I mean, having a recurring income is something that a lot of businesses should always be looking to achieve mm. so rather than 
you know, famine and feast, you've got this recurring revenue coming through your business. So, so the fact that you've got that is a, is a, is a very, very big plus for your for your, for your business. It, it is, but I think the one thing I would say to anyone who's um, trying to set up in a new enterprise is always beware of the factors that you don't have control over, because you know when you are reliant on particular aspects such as um, a company's training strategy. And that strategy can very quickly change. They decide online learning isn't for us or we need another provider. You suddenly lost a client and you've not done anything wrong. You know, you could be providing a great service. It's just that something's changed for them. Or as I say, government funding goes away or indeed your technology partners get swallowed up and you lose a personal relationship. So Yeah, yeah but I think I think it's important you, you, you're you aware of that, but not worry about that because you can only worry about what you can control. You can't worry about what you oh, can't. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's very true. So, so being aware of it's fine, and 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 then being able to pivot or put strategies in place to 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 take the business in a slightly different direction if that happens, absolutely. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be fixated on it because that that can distract you from what's what's important. That's very true. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing, the other thing you 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 mentioned was uh, unique. You know, you use like your unique selling point, and and there was a whole raft of stuff came out after that. So, I mean, if you were to if you were to sort of summarise or hone that down, what, what is the unique selling point of your, of your business and your system? It is quite simply that we work um, almost hand in hand with our clients to give them a digital learning solution that meets an exact requirement. Now, whether that's an exact requirement when we, when we um, start working with them or it's an evolving requirement, the, the main point is that we are working with that client to understand what they need and how they need to move forward and i think that the point is and i said this earlier that the mainstream LS, lms providers they will manage an account with a client to make sure that the renewal comes in in 12 months time and that the client's getting a reasonable level of service perhaps what they're not doing is really understanding the needs the ongoing needs of the client themselves yeah so i mean what, what i'm hearing there and you're please I'm, I'm summarizing your words here so, so if i've got mm. them please put me right, is an affordable, customised solution that fits your business needs. Very good, yes. That's exactly it, yeah. Excellent. Yes, I mean, and that is unique because you're right. For an SME, you know, they'll look at a, a learning provider and they'll see this big, chunky, clunky thing and think, oh, that's too mm -hmm. expensive, I can't do that. So if you're taking the expense out and making that available to them, but also allowing them to then make that work for their business, you know, so mm -hmm. they're, whatever discipline they're in, it doesn't matter, then mm -hmm. yeah, I can see why that that would give you uniqueness, and then that's really really important. How, how how do you communicate that? How do you communicate that uniqueness? We're we're communicating through a, a range of marketing strands. Um, I mean, obviously we've got constant communication strategy going on, social media, LinkedIn. Um, but I mean, marketing is a very tough nut to crack when you're operating on a small company limited budget and. It's for me personally, it's been an uphill thing because I've never been a marketeer personally and I've had to go through that learning curve to, to apply. We have bought in outsourced marketing services uh, more recently so we can move into specialist areas. For example, we now work very heavily in the legal space. And in order to do that, we really had to understand. So we invested in marketing for that. But um, it's been sort of balancing it really between how much how much can we put it towards our marketing? And again, it's a real new start business issue. You know, how will I market my business? Mm -hmm. and, um, so, and so that that has been a challenge without a shadow of a doubt. OK, I mean, do, do you test and measure your marketing? Do you actually you know, track what? what, what oh, you yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're tracking all our communication strategies in terms of email campaigns. So. I mean, we know when the right message is going out because you get more opens and you get more click-throughs and so on. And also, you know, our Google um, metrics are telling us when we're doing things right. And yeah. we also know that because we're spending more money with them every month. But um, you can you can use those metrics um, to, your, to your advantage. But the key thing is actually closing new business. And, and how much of that marketing strategy and investment is needed to close business. And when we moved into the legal space more specifically, we really got a, a, a true metric on that because we had a cold start. 
And so we knew in 12 months exactly what that investment had bought us. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. How, how big's the team you've got now? I mean, how, how many people you got in your team? We, we we only employ three people. Yeah, and I think you know my strategy has always been to operate a lean and efficient operation in terms of we'll bring specialist people in, contract people in when we need them. Yeah, and I've got a team of probably about ten people that we would pull in for particular things. And I'm talking not just about. Um, curriculum and specialist. Yeah. I'm talking about specialist content development and yeah. people who can advise on certain things. You know, it's just a it's a small project for them, but it really gives a lot of value to what we're doing because yeah. we will then put that out to our clients and they will, you know, they will see that as the alliance. You know, front end. It's, it's interesting. It's one of the biggest steps that any any you know new business owner takes is to start employing people. So. I mean, yeah. what, what 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 qualities? I mean, you've got three three employees now, three new teams. What qualities do you look for when you're employing people? Well, I'm looking contracting really. It's it's having people, possibly people I've known historically, who I know are going to do a really good job for my business. That they know what they're doing, they know what they're talking about, and they're really going to add value. Yeah. Um, and that, I suppose, is the value of the strategy that I can pick and choose. Employing people. At that sort of level, I can appreciate is a big challenge for a, a, an organisation. I'm perhaps in the privileged position, but I don't have to do that. Well, not yet anyway. Yeah. You know, the value for me, I I do an awful lot of it myself because you self-teach as you go. And therefore, you know, things like the daily content development stuff, I find quite um, quite exhilarating now. But yeah. having the specialists there... It really is a case of knowing that they're going to deliver value and quality for the money that we're going to pay them. Okay. Okay. No. Good. 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 And just the, the final, the final sort of you know, question for me is: is what, what, what do you attribute your growth to? Because obviously you've grown in the last eight years. What do you, what do you attribute that to? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think having the USP and evolving the USP has been central to everything. I mean, we've been able to achieve the year on year growth, and that's been the achievement. I think. And I think it was initially um, about creating a really strong brand, um, something that was very clinical. It was very definitive in terms of what we did and who we are and how we do it and pushing that out, evolving the website, evolving the marketing. Um, I mean, that's been quite critical. Evolving the renewal model has been essential, really, uh, to the core of how we've grown as a business even though now we've had to change chat, change tack and slightly reinvent ourselves mm. and go back to the end client relationship, which is actually now bringing in a lot of bonus for us because clients are talking to clients, particularly in the legal space. So that, again, I would say has been attributable, attributable to delivering a really strong product and service. Mm. No, absolutely. I mean, have you, do, you do, anything, do you do anything around the trades? Do you do anything around online not, not really, because again, you're a small fish in a very big pond. Um, we always uh, networking is very big, um, and we've done trade fairs in the past. It's possibly a case of just being recognised, and next time something dro drops on someone's doorstep, they say, "Oh yeah, I remember those guys." But the cost sometimes becomes a little bit prohibitive um, when you are in there with all the with all the big boys, essentially, it is very challenging um, yeah. to to sort of sustain that sort of presence. But, you know, from time to time, we will cherry pick something where we feel that there is a real value out to doing it. No, no, fantastic. I mean, John, there, there's, there's absolutely loads in here for, for, for people listening. Um, you know, three, three key key highlights for me is, you know, start with a plan. Yeah. Very important. Be very clear on what your USP and your target market is, and where possible, generate that recurring income. Don't rely on the, you know, the client that's with you for six months and disappears. Get mm -hmm. people with you for a period of time. Keep that recurring income coming into your business. I think are are three or four key important yeah. things for people that are that are in business or are considering going into business. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just sort of give a, a sort of closing note on that. It's you can never do enough for a customer if they're a good customer. You know, just go the extra mile every single time and um, exceed expectation. You know, I've found time on time the feedback we get and 
you know, the, the um, testimonials that we're picking up as a, on the basis of that have been really, really strong in terms of promoting our business. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's an element there of being you know, of under promising but over delivering. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, no, great. Another, another final great piece of advice. That, that, that's brilliant, John. Look, I just want to thank you for your time today. I think the, the, the conversation we had has been great. I think, as I said, there's loads in there for people to to, to, to take away from it. Uh, and and yet, once again, thank you for giving up your time to, to, to come and talk to me. You're most welcome, Martin. And thanks very much for the, again for the invitation. Uh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Okay. Thanks very much. See you. Bye. Bye.